Pink, my nemesis, bane of 13-year-old me's existence. This was definitely not a color I was hoping for when I asked for suggestions on my Instagram for this series, but it was the second one on the list. Both of the times I tried filming this were on Wednesdays, and on Wednesdays we wear pink. This sticker set unfortunately didn't make it into the final pieces, I just couldn't find a place for any of them, and besides, only half of them actually were pink. So, anyway. Thank you, UnaJ, over on Instagram for this color suggestion. Despite my dislike of the color, I actually thought it was really fun to work on this piece. And in all honesty, the one that you'll be seeing the process of in this video isn't the first one I did. I originally sat down to film a few days before I filmed this one. And for a frame of reference, I film on my iPhone. I think it's an iPhone 6, but regardless, an older generation of iPhone with a really bad battery. So I have to keep it plugged in. Unfortunately, when I sat down, I guess I like pulled the cord and it came unplugged from the outlet extension and um, my phone died at the end of the line art and I didn't realize until I was already 95% done with the piece. And that really sucked because I actually quite liked the first piece that I came up with. I have absolutely no idea why the, uh, the guy is shirtless and kind of wearing like a strappy harness top, but it just ended up kind of snowballing into that. No idea. The nice thing about doing that piece and then being able to move on to this next one was I got to test out like the balance of values that I'd want, especially being able to test out certain materials like my new rhinestones that I got. Yes, they're originally for nail art. Yes, I bought them so I'd be able to do doll customization. And yes, they actually do work out really well on paper. Surprisingly, they're actually still stuck on there pretty well. It was nice to have that practice run and I wanted to keep that ear real estate for the um, for the rhinestones. So I decided to do another elf piece for the second one. But um, I, I let it take a different vibe, I guess is the best way of saying it. I filmed the, sec the one that you're seeing the full process video of back in February and I was ready for it to stop snowing every other day. So I decided to draw a very summery character and I wanted to give her a lot of accessories so that way I could use as many colors on her as possible. That's the one problem that I find with these one color family challenges is that I need to have a lot of items in order to use all of my supplies. And I don't want to use a whole bunch of colors in the background because otherwise you get a crazy background with an already busy character and it just kind of looks a mess. I think a good in-between for like balancing the bulk of items and like the actual character design is moving into tattoos as well. I gave her a lot of those and I actually wanted to um, call back to the first piece with the tattoo on the um, the standalone witch girl's hip. It's actually the crystal ball that the original elf is holding. The other tattoos on her, I just kind of took inspiration from a lot of like witch mood boards and witchy aesthetics. I kind of wish that I would have incorporated some of the stars or flowers that were on her hat, but I already think that with the amount of stuff she has already, she's a little busy for my taste. I, I think that's one thing that I need to start getting over is I, I don't particularly like characters with a lot of things piled on top of them. And I want to put like more bits and bobbles on people and I want to like make more complex character designs. I almost gave her a full sleeve and the hip tattoo, but I just felt that it was too lopsided for me. The bulk of my pinks are from my Copic markers and some miscellaneous pens. The one item that I use probably the most out of all of these is my Ecoline watercolor in the number um, 337. 
can't remember off the top of my head what color name that is, and I don't have it written down, but anyhow. Um, I have it in both the bottle and the brush pen, and it was the one supply I knew I'd be able to use for the background with as little streaking as possible. I try not to use Copics for like one big long background, because then you just end up with a whole bunch of streaking. This is the only video in this series where I think I'll be fortunate enough to have a real skin tone. And in fact, I actually had two. I chose to include um, YR00, aka Powder Pink, and R01 vani Pinkish Vanilla? I'm pretty sure that's it. Because, I mean, they, they're like on the borderline of being pink, and they both have pink in the name, so I figured that was like good enough of a qualifier. You could argue that the Reds video will too, but spoiler alert, I've already filmed that one, and I decided not to include any of the lighter um, R family Copics, since those were already used in this video. That means any color edging towards purple in this video will not be in my all purple piece, which is the one I'm planning on filming next. Hmm. So, we've had yellow, we're on pink, red's next, and I've still got to film purple. But, I want to do one of these for every single color. So, I'm hoping I have polls figured out by now, so up in the right hand corner of the video, vote for which color you would like to see next further down in the queue. I, I don't know if this is a little bit premature, but I really like having things planned out far in advance, especially since then I have absolutely no reason for why I shouldn't have something to film when I'm just sitting there thinking, oh geez, I have nothing to do, what should I be filming? I have so many videos planned, you guys. Anyway, if the color isn't up there that you want to see, since I'm pretty sure they only give you five options, um, comment down below which color you would like to see. Since I had a relatively dark tone for the background, I made sure not to go too dark on the colors in her outfit. The fins get a little dark, but that's just because I went in with the um, I went in with the color that I realized I wanted for the background first, and then I had to darken it up later. So that that was a mistake on my part. Even with the um, the range of colors I had, I wish I had a lot more darker pinks. That might be for the sake of the art, but that might also just be because I'm a greedy little gremlin who wants to get their goblin hands on every art supply in a 10 mile radius. Laying down the rhinestones was a little tedious since all I have in my house right now are normal glue sticks. Which, fun fact, I didn't get for art. I got them so I could glue down my eyebrows and do studio makeup over top of them, but that kind of ended up falling to the wayside. But um, I think I made it work. I took my X-Acto knife and cut out small chunks of glue, and then I kind of like smushed them onto the paper. And then using the blade while it was still sticky, I picked up the rhinestones like I would with a, um, with a wax stick, which I don't own one of those, so this was a nice alternative. Some of the glue did squish up around the gemstones, but it dries more or less clear. If you happen to get the chance to put rhinestones on your pieces and you don't mind the fact that that ruins any chance at scanning them, I mean, go for it. I couldn't exactly scan these pieces since I used my uh, glitter gel pens too. Those don't exactly scan very well. So the hardest utensils for me to use in this piece, and 
really both of them, was the uh, color pencils. The ones that I have are kind of odd colored. Like they don't, only like the baby pink really matches the rest of the things. The weird salmon cerise color that I have just kind of stood out very oddly. You can definitely see it more on the first piece where I used it, I think, on top of the girl's boots. But, eh. The, the color pencils are not ones that I particularly enjoy using. I am, however, very proud of myself for using my, um, my pink highlighters for the, uh, the bright neon pink plastic beach bag. I had one exactly like that growing up, and it just brings back some pretty good memories. And also, it allowed me to shove in more accessories and use more utensils, so win-win. Would this count as a win-win-win? and forth as to what color to make her hair, I was tempted to use my darkest sharpie, which it, it's kind of almost leaning towards purple. I used it in the first piece for the straps across his chest, but I wanted to make sure to keep her very light toned. Luckily, when I um, filmed this, I think I had it the first time, but I don't remember for sure, but I had just gotten RV52 cotton candy, which is a lovely color, and that ended up being the perfect color for her hair. It's a little close in value to the hat, but since the hat was done using my iridescent watercolors, there's enough of a difference, especially when you start to turn the page. enjoyed watching the process of this piece. I really wish I would have been able to show you guys the full process of my first attempt, but I think using this color is far enough from my comfort zone to be a challenge in pretty much any case. Though I'm curious, which of the two pieces do you like more? Tell me down below and I'm really interested to hear from you guys and don't forget to help me pick the next color in the queue. If you'd feel so inclined, hit that subscribe button or the bell icon to get future notifications, and check me out on my other social media handles. Thanks, and I'll see y'all in the next one.